members to celebrate Christ as our King. And celebrating this great feast day, this great solemnity, as we close out our liturgical year, we are constantly reminded that Jesus is Lord and Head over our lives. The church say amen. amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this great solemnity, let us call to mind our need for God's love and his mercy as we pray. I confess to all my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, for what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask that Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus said the Lord God, 
I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they are scattered. When it was cloudy and dark, I myself would pasture my sheep. I myself would give them rest, said the Lord God. The lost I would seek out. The strayed I would bring back. The injured I would bind up. The sick I would heal. But the sleek and the strong I would destroy. Shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, said the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all died, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. Let each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits. Then in his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to 
his God and Father. When he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne. And all the nations will be assembled before him. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. And the righteous would answer him and say, but Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty or give you drink? When did we see you a stranger or welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see all see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them, reply. 
Amen. I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or strange or naked, or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, and man, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be the God of my salvation. Be the Lord of salvation. And when I feel alone, He gives me a song to make it the rule of day. of colonization. 
Y'all know, y'all did know that, right? That the Francophone countries, the, the, the countries that were that were conquered by France, still today have to pay back to France. And the pact is very plain. The pact of a continua continuation of colonialization. I mean, we need to hide in there. We still colonize you. Keep give us your resources. You owe us. And so when I think of kings, we might have that baggage. You know, and there's no critique, no, no disrespect for King Charles III or Queen Elizabeth. We enjoy to watch that pageantry and all of that. But for us, Christ as king is not that. <coughs> Christ came and Christ ruled in a very different way. And so we hear the Lord speak in the book of Ezekiel today. And he says, I, the Lord, so who's speaking? The Lord God is speaking and says, I, the Lord, will shepherd my people. I will care for my people. I will protect my people. I will provide my people. I will feed them. I will nurture them. They belong to me. I used to say my young people, GP, God's people. You're the GP. And because we're the GP, he's going to look after us and care for us, and we are his own special possession. Not to lord over as a king would its subjects, not to enslave, not to oppress, but to lead us to freedom. Somebody say amen. amen. And so in celebrating today as a parish, the church, our world, we need to recognize and embrace Christ's kingship in a great and significant way. Christ unites and gathers. So much we seek peace in our world. So much we seek an end to violence in our own city. But true peace comes from knowing and sharing and living and walking in the way of Jesus Christ, our King. You see, he brings people of every nation, of every land, of every people, of every walk of life. In a time when we see so much going on, we're so divided. We need to be standing for justice and righteousness. But so often it is tossed aside. It is seen as really not that important. As long as people can maintain power, they can maintain greed and personal gain and speak falsehood for their own benefit. If you can't say amen, say mercy. <laughs> when we live in a society where our youth have become disconnected from the value of human life, where the sense of belonging and meaning has been distorted in youth disillusion, allowing uncontrolled emotions, don't know how to deal with anger. I've had to do so bad. We haven't taught our children how to deal with these very difficult and confusing emotions, and then they model what they see. The understanding of manhood and womanhood, uh, the thug life, to be a man is to be a thug. And I can't say in the church what the other half that goes along with that for the women. Father Chester Smith would say, I, 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 I. <laughs> You see, it dominates the psyche by what we listen, what we put in our brain. But then we walk, they're not like this anymore, like this. The little white pod, the little head that proclaims so much of a message that we even sleep with them on. Do you know that young, the many young people that sleep with their AirPods on? And so all of that message is just, is just being programmed into the cycle. 
and they know not the infinite goodness and the love of Jesus Christ. I talked to someone this past week about the children who get children baptized in the church. And that person told me he wanted to wait until they grow up and control for themselves. And I said, but how do you make a choice for yourself? They don't come to church. You don't expose them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you're not giving them anything to choose, how do you expect them to grow up and say, you know, I want to be a Catholic, I want to be a Christian, I want to get baptized, when it hasn't been shown to them. And so they go not knowing who Jesus is for the power of his love. So Christ, our King, seeks me by. I forgot to do my Bible check. You know what time it is? Bible check time. And devices and iPads and iPhones and Samsung, whatever the other ones are called. I'm just an iPhone person. I can't do anything else. Second Samuel. The second book of Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Second Samuel 5, 1 through 10. I share this with you because it's important for us to see that Christ, the new day, Christ, the son of David, is the eternal king. But look what David does. Let's, if, you're, if you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say wait. Amen. 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 I'm gonna. This is a longer curriculum piece, so I'm not gonna use that. I had to read it with it, but just, just listen to this. All the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron, and they said, "Look, we are your bone and your flesh." In days past, when Saul was still our king, you were the one who led Israel out in all its battles and brought it back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel, you shall rule over Israel. Then all the elders of Israel came to the king in Hebron, and at Hebron, King David made a covenant with them in the presence of the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. And David was 33 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he was king over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he was king 33 years over all Israel and Judah. The first thing that strikes me, and I get first you have to understand what's happening here, the kingdom is divided between the north and the south. And so they're coming to David to ask David to unite the kingdom. And so he says to them, that they say to him, look, we are your bone and your flesh. We belong to you. You are a part of us. We're yours. You are ours. And so the house of Judah had already anointed David as king. But you see, today, the tribes of Israel commit themselves to David, the second king, under the northern and southern, southern kingdoms, by anointing him king of Israel as well. So David consolidates his rule. As ruler, he unites, he brings together, he ends the vision and seeks unity and oneness. Boy, could we use a lot of that today here in these United States of America. Somebody that can stand up and bring people together. But on this feast of Christ the King, I share that because we belong to Christ. Christ is grafted on to us in our baptism our confirmation, my ordination, your future ordination. It's grafted onto us. 
We are one with him. He belongs to us. We belong to him. We are united and one with Christ. And Christ got, seeks to gather his people together. Somebody say amen. amen. He is the new David that unites us for justice. Night unites us for dignity and equality. True king should seek out the laws. It means to go walking and talking and engaging and letting those on the peripheries know those who are struggling, those who are suffering, those who are hurting, let them know that their life matters. Let them know that they are somebody. The stranger, the immigrant, that their value, that their lives matter. No one is considered unworthy or without dignity. I don't care how you look, how you talk, how you walk, how you love, how you act. Every human person must be respected and has dignity and respect because they are made in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. <laughs> And this must be the message not only of our parish, it is the message of our church because our world is broken. Yeah. And we can no longer say, okay, you, you, you're, you come in, no, you ain't living right, you gotta stay out. <laughs> Pope Francis has made it very clear that this must be a church and a community for everybody. No more separating and telling someone who is divorced they can't be in the church. No more separating and telling a woman because she had a child out of wedlock that she can't serve. No more isolating people because they belong to the LBGTQ. I hope they didn't have anything to say. But the point is, no human being is regarded as unwanted. And I heard that it was said by some that they shouldn't be. It is clear. In the message of the gospel today, Jesus simply says, did you see me in that person that was hurt? Did you see me in that hungry person? Did you see me in that prison? Did you see me in that immigrant? Did you see me in that drug dealer? Did you see me in that drug addict? Did you see me in that prostitute? And that's why when I walk the neighborhood and walk around the community, I touch and greet and eat, and I touch and greet and reach each and every person that I encounter. Amen. No matter who they are, how they're living, or what their context or situation is. This is the call for us as God. Church, God's people. Christ the King celebration makes no sense if we don't allow Him to unite us. If we don't allow ourselves to model after Him and adhere to His teaching. You want to know what you're going to be judged at? You want to know what you, who, 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 you going to be He said it right here. You're not going to be judged by the color of your skin, you're not going to be judged by the language that you speak. You're not going to be judged by the amount of money that you have or you don't have. Right. Did you see me? Did you love me? Did you care for me? Did you respect me? Amen. Did you see me in all of these folks that we call the despicable, unwanted? Yeah. That's the message for Peace of Christ the King, church. That we must be a people that and that truly cares. Yes. And that should be the focus of our direction as we come together and we begin this new church crew year. Yes. Let this Advent season you're about to embrace next week be a time of our spiritual preparation to receive him anew. Receive him again. Allow him to be anew your personal Lord and Savior that you might share your personal relationship with Jesus Christ 
with others. Because some don't know his love. And it's, it, it, it puts a tear in your eye when they're wondering, how do I make it through? How do I get over? It's too tough. And I said, we'll, we'll do it together. And we take them by the hand. And we let them know the value. And I said, now, nah, let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we bow our heads and recognize you as our Lord, as our King, as our God. You seek to bring us together as your people here in this community of St. Augustine, here on the south side of Memphis. May we see and encounter you in each person that we meet and that we see. May we care and respond with your great love. You gave the ultimate gift, the ultimate example of giving your life for us. Bless us that we might give our lives in service of you in our brothers and in our sisters. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. as we acknowledge Christ as our Lord and King and offer these prayers and petitions to the Father in his name.
judge them justly and wisely. They strive for true peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That in Christ, the King of justice and life, the evils of abortion, emphasize euphemism, may be eliminated from our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the world's harvest will be gathered and shared among all people, especially those who are in most need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That more men and women would generously accept the call to serve Christ and his church as priests, deacons, and religious brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the departed may enjoy the peace and endless life of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For what else shall we pray? On our 24th heavenly birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray for the bishops of Kentucky and uh, Tennessee, uh, Bishop Stein and Bishop David, are both informed us that they are attending the meeting. And so we continue. They've been doing a lot of meetings lately. It seems like the third meeting that they've had in less than a month. So pray for whatever they're deliberating on, that they will bring forth many blessings for the church here in the Mid-South. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. I pray for peace and grace for my sister in love, Mrs. Powell. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For these and all the prayers that we hold in our heart, God of love, our refuge, and our strength, hear the prayers of the church and grant us the grace to be ever faithful to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray our St. Michael's prayer together against the evil in our world. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are the against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God redeem him from the grave, and do thou the grace of the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who crowd out the world, seizing the wounded souls. Amen. There is not a second. Oh, that's our goal. So 
let a thousand be poor and operate in front of the church. Please help us get ready to go into Christmas. I know y'all want a pretty Christmas yeah. <laughs> So please be generous.
pray that this is my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pray the Lord, sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord, his name, for our good and the Lord's church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of this human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son and Son will bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Put out for you for many for forgiveness of sins. 
resurrection and ascension into heaven. Before the second coming, the offer of thanksgiving is holy, and we are satisfied. The open prayer upon the relation of your church, and recognize the sacrifice of victim by whose death we will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us a true offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, the blessed Joseph the Spouse, the St. Augustine, and St. Monica, St. Arnold Jackson, St. Joseph the Madalas, the St. Victor, St. Gelatius, St. Josephine of Akita, Charles Luana, and all the saints. On this constant intercession of your presence, we rely on the Holy God. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity of the Church on earth through servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, Terry, our Bishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, deacons, religious brothers, religious sisters, and missionaries, and the entire community of gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who return before you. And in your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were half pleasing to you for, at their passage in this life, be kind of this your kingdom, they hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is. Through him with me. O God, my Father, you Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and
true sign of Christ our King. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who can sing the world, blessed are those who are called the Son of the Lamb. Lord,
I talked with the designer yesterday, and we should have them by the end of this week. We'll get them printed and get them out next week. So that will give us a good three months to get ourselves three months? Yeah. Three months to get ourselves together. Everyone can come out for that. Um, a few weeks ago, there was a notification in the bulletin, and I'm, I usually don't respond to anonymous notes. But someone told me if I were to require people to dress up, come to church, the people won't come to church. Come as you are. I have never said, you never heard from my mouth or from my pen, that you have to dress a certain way to come to man. However, if they're served on this altar, yes, you need to have decent shoes on, you need to have slacks, and you need to have proper clothing for the ministry. What you wear when you come in, I between <coughs> you and your means and you and God and your style and your design. I, you know, as long as it's not offensive, it doesn't bother me what you wear. But when you're on the altar, we need to dress for liturgy. We are leaders of worship. Okay? You are our leaders of worship. So your attire needs to reflect your ministry. So I will repeat myself. Come to church as you are. I would use the floor. If I come here, not the floor, they come in flip flops, they come in shorts and t-shirts and all that. But here, most of the Christians do. Uh, their Sunday best, we do up a Sunday best though. Yeah. And the church is only on Sunday. Yeah. But really, I'm really open to whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever makes you happy, whatever you feel you can do, please just be here. And you bring your children, let them know their part. But if you want to minister, we need you to really uh, pay attention to the role that you're functioning. Because some ministers don't have to wear roles. Some ministers, such as electors, don't have a required uniform. Those who are, they're like all service. You see the officer, they all got matching roles now? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody notice that?
this man in his goal and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. God. Thank you, Peter God. Would you join us in our closing hymn, number 346, He is King of Kings. Thank you. 